Let's take our Bibles and go to Luke chapter 23 this morning. Luke chapter 23. Next Sunday, Sunday we obviously celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but today I want to look at his crucifixion. Because next, next week, when we look at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we will see the power of the empty, empty tomb. We'll, we'll see the power of the empty tomb and how, how life changed because we have, we have a Savior. But this morning, I did want us to look at the, the place of the atonement where Jesus, Jesus Christ obviously spilt his blood uh, for the remission of our, of our sin. He willingly laid down his, his life. He came to, to live a sinless life because no human being can live a sinless life. He came to live a sinless life so that our sins would be forgiven through his shed blood and we, we could live in victory and have victory over sin and over, over the temptations of this world and temptations and into our life. As a born again believer who has trusted Christ as their Savior, it is something that, that we do to look at, be reminded of, because he paid the ultimate price, right? He showed his, his love. Sometimes you ever, ever, you know, ask ask a child, you know, how much do you love daddy? And they just kind of stretch their arms out. Right? That's exactly what Christ did. He stretched stretch his arms out to show how much he loves the world. He laid down, down his life, and he continued to man, manifest his love in our, in our lives. So Luke chapter 23, and, and uh, verses 32 to 46. Luke 23, starting at verse number 32. And there, and there were also two other, other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the malefactors was one on the right hand and the other left. Then said Jesus, Father, for them, for they know not what they do. And then they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding the, the holding, and the rulers, rulers also them derided him, saying, he say, he say others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of, of God. And the soldiers also so mocked him, coming, coming to him, and offering him vinegar, and saying, If that thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription on also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. The Jew. And one of the mal- malefactors were hanged, railed on him, saying, if be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering buked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And when he indeed, or, and we indeed justly, for, for we see the due reward of our, our deeds, but this, but this hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou, thou comest in thy kingdom. Jesus said unto him, him really I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be, thou be with paradise. And about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness, darkness for all the earth until, until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when, and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend, commend my spirit. And having, having said us, he gave, he gave the ghost. Lord, Lord, we ask you that you would just guide us through the scriptures. We ask, ask our, our heart drawn to you. Our thought, our thought be established this morning. I pray that you just remind us of the great, great love that for us that, that was manifested in your Son, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I pray, Father, within our hearts, a burning would, would be stirred, a burning of, of just the truth of your word, the truth of who we are in, in Christ. Christ has done for us, and Christ, Christ continues to do through, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our life that, Father, we would just... just be reminded the greatness of this relationship that, that we have, though it did not cost us anything, it said Christ everything, but yet, yet he was willing to, to pay the price so that he could walk away, rise in victory, having the ease of death and hell, having power, having all power, our all authority, and there's not a single life that, life that cannot be changed by his power. There's not a single soul that can, cannot be saved. So, so Lord, I ask that you, that you use this, this message to reach those that are uh, maybe on the, in the internet, they'll watch, watch the service some other time, time. That, Lord, it would just minister to us as well, reminding us of the, of the victory in Christ, the, uh, the forgiveness, forgiveness we have, and Lord, just, or just the acceptance that we have in Christ. And 
Lord, if, Lord, if maybe, maybe they're struggling with uh, their salvation, they're, they're doubting it, or maybe they've never trusted Christ yet, Lord, Lord, by the end of this message, as the Holy Spirit takes the word of God in God into hearts, uh, that soul would come to put, put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Uh, that person would be strengthened in their faith, being uh, completely standing upon the promise that Jesus Christ paid, paid it all. But Father, we just ask that you would receive all honor, glory, and power. power. Ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, again, looking at the atonement and, and the place of atonement this morning. I'm looking forward to it. Too. It's, it's mine and my wife's uh, favorite favorite time of year. I'm sure it's just yours. Just celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and minded. We, we have victory in, in Jesus Christ. We have, have become heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Uh, there's no, nothing in our life, life we can ever face that we can't have victory over because, because of Jesus Christ and because of his power in our life. I'm glad, glad that we are new creatures in Christ. That whatever the souls were before salvation, man, they've been broken. Now, we can, if we're not careful, careful ourselves, back uncontroll of sin, but those chains have been broken. The blood has been shed. We can be cleansed from, from those sin, walk in newness of life, and really, and really walk in the freedom that Jesus has secured for us. We have that freedom in Christ. And, uh, you, know, you know, sometimes you may have a bad day at work or a bad day with a family member or, or just a bad day in, in general. You know, you know, you get a little... Uh, a little pouty, you know, with whoever's in your life, life a little up. But, but just, just remind yourself as a, as a Christian, every day is a, a good day with the Lord because you have some, someone who always looks up after you, always watches over you, has, has your interest in mind. He has prepared a wonderful, wonderful place for you. And he desires to walk with you, with you and talk with you every day. The de death of Jesus Christ opened up the way, way for you and me, me and anyone else who wants to, to go into the, the throne room of God, to have a relationship with a high and holy God. Your sin cannot not dwell with God, but he, but he made a way for sinners to, to come to him through the veil, the veil of Jesus Christ. Right? He's made a way, a way for us to be clean through the blood of Jesus Christ, to be accepted in his light, to be robed in the righteousness of, of the Lord, uh, to be, be prepared uh, to go to that place, place that, that had prepared for us, and that is have, have sit down at the table of the Lord, to enjoy the marriage supper of the Lamb, the Lamb and to enjoy our relationship with the, with the Lord for eternity. But today is a day that we get to, get to celebrate the, the death of Jesus Christ, his love. Aren't you, aren't you glad that death was not the, the end, but only the, the beginning? And that's what I was reminded of this morning. In Rome, Romans chapter 5, verse 11, the Bible says, not only so, but we, we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. We have received the atonement, the shedding of blood for our sin. In the Old Testament, obviously, they had to take like lambs and sacrifices to the priest. priest. The priest would kill the sacrifice. The high priest would take the, the blood in the Holy of Holies, sprinkle the blood, blood on the mercy seat uh, as a symbol of the nation of Israel being forgiven of their sins. The blood of the bulls and goats never washed away any sin. It was, it was a, a symbol of what was to come. They had to do it, do it by faith. They had, had to trust that the priest would perform the sacrifice that he's supposed to be the holy. Uh, uh, the high priest would go into the holy of holies behind the, the veil, do everything properly as he's supposed to, so, it w so the sacrifice of blood, blood would be believed by, by the Lord. I'm glad that, that we don't count on a, on a man today to do anything, any, any conciliation for, for us, us with God, because Jesus Christ, who, who is the high priest, he finished the work. His blood was accepted before the throne of God. And now, now you and I get the benefit in everything that Jesus has done. To remind us of what Jesus has done. To remind us that, you know what, he does understand. He understands what our life entails. He, un he understands the struggles that, that we face. Though the things we may face 
different than what he faced, still was tempted to tempt all points like as we, we are at without sin. He still had, had those struggles that tempted him, but he always, always leaned upon the Father. Father. He wanted to finish the Father's work, came to fulfill the Father's will, not, not his own will. That, that's why he denied everything the devil tried to tempt him with. And he leaned upon the truth of God's word. He, he leaned upon the truth of who God is and, and what, what God had, had given him to do. And now we get to, to benefit in all that Jesus did. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18, And all things are of God, of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, had given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world, world unto himself, not imputing their tra trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of rec reconciliation. So we're reminded that it was God's plan from the beginning to reconcile the world, world unto him. He, he did it through Jesus Christ, through his sacrifice. Not everybody will receive that. Not, not everybody will have faith in Jesus Christ. But the believer, the born again believer who has, it's something to rejoice over. I don't have to do anything. I don't. I don't have to die for my sin, and I don't have to do anything to keep myself saved. Jesus did, did all work for me. He did all the hard hard work. Now I have the easy work to do, though sometimes it may be hard for me. And that is just to faithfully walk walk with, him, to walk by faith and not by sight, to let Him keep doing the, the work in me. He hasn't finished the work work that he wants to do in me. He started it and he's going to continue it until the day we see our Savior face to face. Looking forward to that. But you can just be reminded that you do have a risen seer. And like, like we talked about in Sunday, Sunday, he has all power. He has the keys of death and hell. He has authority over devil, over his demons. He has authority over your life if you will let him have the authority over your life, but he can bless your life. He can help you to have the best Christian life, life that, that you ever have because he's the one that wants to do the work in, in you and through you. This morning I want us to see the place of the, the atonement. Look at verse 33 through 38. When they were come to the, the place which is called Calvary. Now in the, in the other gospel it speaks about, about Gotha. It speaks about this hill that looked like a skull, and you can you can go to Israel today and go to that to that place and see that hill that depicts the place of a skull, a place where people were crucified, cried criminals were crucified. Remember, Jesus never committed any crimes. The only crime he committed was being faithful to God and being God, because the Pharisees, the religious rulers, they wanted to get rid of him. Of him. Because he claimed him to be God, saw all the miracles, but they did not, not want, want to lose their, their place, their religious place, uh, and they did not want to lose the benefits they had by going along with the Roman government. It's better to be on the side of the, side of the Lord than on the side of him. It may, it may cost you some, something, but the benefits of, of your life Having to pay you, it costs you something to follow Christ. Those benefits outweigh any any benefit this world has to offer. But when you think about the, the place, it was a place of shame. It was a place of a broken body. It was a place where blood was shed. Hebrews chapter ten reminds us by this which uh, uh, by this which which will are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. It need to be a continual sacrifice or offer. offer. He offered his body, body once. So it's wrong to, to leave in every time, every time you make communion and you take that bread, bread to think that it's the body, body of Christ. Or, or you take the juice and think that's the blood of, of Christ over and over again. He was sacrificed once. He only, he only took one sacrifice to appease the wrath of God and to ease the punishment for sin. Because the wages of sin is as death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And praise the Lord this morning, if you have received the gift of God, you, you have God's unconditional gift that will never be taken away from you because it is as eternal life. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. But it goes on to say, And every priest standeth daily, daily ministering and offering oft times the same, same sacrifices, which, which can never take away sins. But this man, man speaking of Jesus, after he offered one, one sacrifice for sin, sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, obviously signifying it was finished. The work was finished. The work of reconciliation, the work, the work of the atonement, the blood being shed, was finished. His, his body was broken. And, and I know that, that you know this, but you read, you, you read the details of, of the crucifixion and how, how God robed himself in flesh so man can, could rip the flesh apart, rip his beard out, beat him beyond recognition. Uh, again, I mean, when you look, look at it, pictures of Jesus hanging on a cross, modern pictures and some stuff that have been, you know, drawn or painted, that's, that's not how he you couldn't, the Bible says you could recognize him. He'd look like a person when they were done beating him and scourging him. And it's still, I mean, it, I mean it, I'm so great, grateful that God did that for me. God picked the time and time in human history to come, come into the world to die a cruel, cruel death. Not, not by lethal injection, to be put to, to sleep, not electrocution that some, some of our, our, our star state do. But he came at a time where the Roman Empire was in, in control and they had the cruelest way of killing people. That, that's what our Lord and Savior chose because the blood had to be spilt. Sometimes like, we don't, don't understand why, why he did that or why it had to be that way. Couldn't it have been some other way? And the answer is no. Blood had to be spilled. His body had to be broken, torn apart. And that should remind us of his love and his determination that, that he's going to go to the cross. I mean, even before he gets to Calvary, Golgotha, to the hill, hill of the skull, he's in the garden of Gethsemane, praying, praying with such determination and such, I don't know, such, such energy, such stress that the Bible says he's sweating blood. Because the bones in his forehead are under such pressure, they burst, and he is—he's already bleeding before he gets to the cross of Calvary. So, so don't ever tell, tell me that God doesn't love you, because he, he does. He did something no other human being being would ever dare to do. Yeah, there are those those that dare to die for a loved one, but to go to go through what he went through. To have himself bro broken and to, and to shed his, bl his blood the way that he, he did. But it is a place of suffering that he knows. His body was broken, the blood was blood was shed. The Bible says, says in Matthew 5, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless, bless them that like you do good to them, that you and pray, pray for them, despite faithfully use you and persecute you. You know why the Lord, why the Lord wanted to do that? Because he shed, shed his blood for those people. Those that we consider our enemy, Jesus died for. So obviously we have no, no right to do anything against them. But we have someone that we can, we can go to, say, Lord, I know you died for them, but they're kind of my enemy, they're against me, they're, they're saying things, they're doing things, so Lord, Lord, I know that they're precious in, in your sight because you, because you died for them. So Lord, Lord, would you take care of the matter? Would you change their heart? Would you help them to see their need of, of Jesus Christ? It says in 1 Peter chapter 1, For as much as you know, they know that you are not deemed with corrupt things as silver, sil gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, there's the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. Do you realize that blood is precious to the Lord? Because it's the only blood that, that God is going to re receive as the full atonement for all sin. That's why John the, the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God taketh away the way the sin of the world. That's why every person needs to believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ said his blood was shed. That, that was payment that, that God was only going to accept and will only accept is the blood of Jesus Christ. 
have you been born again? Have you been, have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you know Christ as your Savior? Do you, do you have a percent assurance of salvation? Because Jesus Christ paid the price. He paid the price so that you and I, and I wouldn't have to. He paid the price so you and I could be reconciled to the Lord. But one thing we never want to do is, do is never want to step on the blood of Christ. We never want to disregard the blood of Christ. We want to make sure that, honestly, we make sure that it stays precious to us because it's only through the blood of Christ that our, our sins are washed away, that we find any forgiveness with the Lord. But it is a place of shame as well as, well as suffering. I want you to notice that you had the people who were gazing upon him. You had the Pharisees that were derived from the soldiers that beat him, mocked him, scourged him, hung him on the cross, and then they're going to sit there and gamble and roll dice, basically, let's, to see who gets the vessel, to see who gets the garment that belonged to Jesus, because they weren't going to tear, tear it in half, because they saw it was, was all, so it was one piece. There were no seams in it. And it was something very unique, and then they wanted that. But the soldiers mocked him. The religious rulers deride him. I mean, it's just there are there are some people who will continue to slap Jesus in the face, physically or with their words, because they say, "If thou be the Son of God, if thou be Christ, come off the cross." They're wanting another miracle. They see he's beat beyond recognition. I mean, they physically can't get himself off the cross, but all the miracles they saw all Jesus do, now they just want to keep, you know, deriding him and slap him in the face and just denying he is. Oh, come off the cross. We'll believe you. They believe with all the other miracles. They're not going to believe if Jesus were to come off the cross in his glorified body. Remember, remember, James and John saw Christ in all, in all glory on Mount Transfiguration. I mean, Jesus takes them up, him up, he's transfigured in front of them. Moses and Elijah come to talk to Christ on the Mount Transfiguration, and, and Peter is just, just doesn't know what to do. He says the first thing that comes to his, to his mind and out, and out of his mouth is, Lord, it's good for, for us to hear. You know what? It, it is good to be in the pres presence of God. It is to be good to, good to be reminded of, of who Christ is. The, the disciples had been following him, but now only three get to see, see him, him in his glorified body. So it was good for them to be there, but then Peter kind of thought hu human, uh, humanistically and said, let, let us build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one, one for Elijah. But then the glory, glory of God descends upon them, and they hear a voice that says, This is my son, and I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Because it's about Christ. Christ is the only one, one that God will accept. He, his blood's the only one that God will accept for the atonement of any person's sin. The reminds us in Isaiah 53, He is despised and rejected of men. men. Man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our face from him. He, he was despised, and we, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our, our griefs and our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our, our transgressions, he, he was bruised for our, our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are, we are healed. Everywhere you see our. our you could, could put in I and read it, make it personal. Because of his stripes, I'm healed. Because of his stripes, because of his sacrifice, I even have an opportunity to go to heaven. The, the way of salvation has been opened for anyone who wants it. It goes on, on I, all like sheep, in verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray, turned everyone unto his way, and the Lord, the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. We, ha we have to remind ourselves that, that all sin was poured upon that sacrifice, upon Jesus Christ on that day. day. Every sin you've committed and are committing and, and will commit, Jesus Christ died for. And I weren't even alive when he was hanging on the cross. 
So some might be thinking, thinking well, how could I die for my sins? I wasn't alive. Because he's the eternal God. He was dying for the sins of the world. Past, present, future. That's why in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, 9, we have promised that he's faithful and just to forgive give us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You and I, you and I do something wrong and the Holy Spirit, you know, you know, brings it to our mind and, you know, kind of, you know, puts his finger in our face and says, hey, that wasn't, wasn't right. right. Whether you, you got angry at somebody, whether you, you yelled at your wife, your spouse, you did something that wasn't right, right. The Spirit convicts your heart. You have to c- confess it. You can't let that sin stay and fester. You've got to confess it, make it right with the Lord, and then make it, make it right with the person. And we have that privilege and opportunity because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I want you to go back and, back and look, if you turn, go back and look at Luke 23 and look at verse 39 through 43 because we see what the, the atonement prov- provides for us, the provision of blood atonement. There are religions that don't want to speak about the blood. blood. There are denominations, religious, religious denominations that have hymnals that have no, no songs about the blood of Jesus Christ. But Christianity is based upon on the blood of Jesus Christ. It's based upon what Jesus Christ did. You know that the word Christianity is, is used, uh, used very, very loosely these days around the world. Different religious groups call them Christians, but, but they're not Christians because, because they're not following the ways of Jesus Christ. They're not, they're not building life upon the, the foundation of Jesus Christ. Their life does not manifest any proof that they're following Jesus Christ, the Son of God. When you think about this and you look at it, uh, in verse 39, he says, And one of the, of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in, in the condemnation? Be indeed just, just, for we receive the due re- reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And, and he said to Jesus, Jesus, Lord, remember me, and thou comest into thy kingdom. You know the, know the truth that two criminals were hung on crosses on either side of Jesus. He, Jesus died in the midst of, of criminals. But one of them um, had a change of heart. When you read all the Gospels, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you, you get the whole scope of what was, was going on that, that day. You got two criminals that are curse, cursing Jesus' name. Two criminals that are ch- chiming in with the religious people saying, yeah, if you're, you're cross, get yourself down and us as, as well. But at some point, one of the criminal's hearts is changed. I kind of read between the lines. I kind of see this one criminal. We don't know his name, but he must have known about Jesus. Maybe Saul. Maybe, maybe he was among the 4,000 or 5,000 that re- received a call of of food in the Lord. Maybe he was someone who took advantage of people and, and, he, and he saw the Lord heal people. Because to say this man's done nothing thing amiss, he must know something. He's been around. He is a criminal. Uh, him, uh, him and this other guy, they not only were criminals, but they were murderers. They committed murder and they insurrection. Something was happening to this man's heart. The Holy Spirit's bringing it into his mind maybe the things that he saw about Jesus and the compassion. And even hearing Jesus on the cross say, Father, forgive them for they know they know not they do. Maybe he had already been cursing those that hung him on the cross, cursing the guards as they even dragged him to the cross. Maybe even cursing God because it wasn't, wasn't for that he was dying for his crimes. But as he's hanging there, their neck cries, something is happening in, in heart. That when the other criminal on the other side just continues to hit his rent, the one criminal says, hey, knock it off. You know, you know what? We're reaping what we deserve. We're reaping what we sowed. But this man, this man, nothing wrong. He's, he's, he's not a criminal. 
In verse 43, the, the un, unnamed criminal just looks at Christ, and the Bible says, uh, verse 2, oh, we're at here, verse 4, uh, yeah, 42, he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. What amazing words. Doesn't, he, he doesn't ask for forgiveness for any, any crime. Doesn't ask for healing. This Lord, remember me when you come into your, into your kingdom. Something had changed, changed in his heart. In those words, words you see, he understands. He, he doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve to be with the, with the Lord. He says, will you remember me? Can I be in your thoughts? And what comforting words he hears. 43, Ver verily I say to thee today, shalt thou, thou be me in paradise. Not getting off the cross. But his spirit, spirit will. His spirit will to the Lord. Lord. He will be with the Lord. He receives forgiveness. Again, the words of Christ are so powerful. The Lord doesn't even have to name off everything he did wrong to say, well, I forgive you for this. I forgive you for this. I forgive you for this. Today you'll be with me in paradise. He's been forgiven. Die in peace. In the comfort for, of the presence of the Lord. I understand that. His visage was so, so marred that he wasn't recognized as the man. The body of Christ, you couldn't recognize it as a man. It was just a piece of meat hanging up there. But the Bible is still true. The presence of the Lord's fullness of joy. Because, because he heard the words of Christ, he now has to send joy. He's going to be with the Lord. Because Jesus was willing to come and, and live a sinless life and, and die a death that he wasn't, he didn't deserve to die, but, but he did it because of love. We get to celebrate a empty tomb. We get to celebrate the resurrection of Christ because he was willing, willing to die first. He was willing to be hand, handed over into the hands of sinful men and to die a very cruel death. But the, but the vision of this atonement moment brings forgiveness. It brings forgiveness for the thief of the cross, all those that re reject Christ. As long as they'll have breath, they can't they receive forgiveness. Forgiveness will repent and turn back to the Lord. Now there is a there is a line that once someone cross over, and only God knows that there's no turn back. They've gone too far. Only God knows that. As long as some, someone's breathing today, they have an opportunity to re receive the forgiveness of God because of the, of the blood of Jesus Christ. But again, one man receives this forgiveness. There were two, two rejecting, rejecting one turns and, and receives the forgiveness. Colossians 2, 9, 9 reminds in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, to wit that God was, was in Christ, Reconciling the world unto him to himself, not, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and, ha and hath committed us the word, word reconciliation. It, all, it still always amazes me to read those words. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto him to himself. Because what was his name? Emmanuel, God with us. It's all, it's all in God's plan to re reconcile people unto him. And the only way he could do it was through the blood of his son and our sa saved Jesus Christ. But the thief asked in faith and the thief, the thief received e eternal life, life with Christ. Revelation 2, 7 reminds us, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To, to him overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. We know that the Son of God, God is come and hath given us an understanding that, that we, we made him that is true, and we are in, in him that is true, even, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the, the true God and eternal life. That's John 5. Do you know, know without a shadow of a doubt this morning that you're in Christ and Christ is in you? you know without a shadow, shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. 
You have that peace within you. You know heaven is your home. You know the blessed hope is coming for you. You know that God loves you. It's a, it's a relationship, not religion. But it is being reminded of what he did for us. Being reminded, I've never forgotten my dad saving me when I was drowning as a little, as a little boy. I've never forgotten that day. I don't remember, I remember how I was, maybe seven, eight, maybe I was nine. I just, I just remember I just started learning how to swim, and I was just having fun, just jumping off the diving board in the deep end and, and paddling over to, to the side, getting out and out and doing it again. Oh, man, I, I, I did so, so many times that I exhausted myself. But in my mind, I didn't, I didn't think I was exhausted until I jumped in the, in the last time and just went limp and could not swim, couldn't paddle, couldn't do anything. But I remember someone grabbing me and bring, bringing me out of the pool, and it was my dad. My dad saw I was in distress, and he didn't, didn't hesitate to jump in. Jesus Christ sees people in distress, and he doesn't hesitate to jump in when they receive him. Because there are people that reject. You can't, can't help someone that's rejecting and fighting against you. But somebody that, that wants to help and, and sees their need, and the Lord's right there to save them, right there to, there to bring them to safety. In verse 44 through 46, we think about this, just, just a minute. We see the place, we, we see the provision, but the payment of the atonement. Verse 44 through 440, the Bible reminds us, and it was about the sixth, sixth hour, there was a darkness over the whole earth until the ninth, the ninth hour. And this wasn't night time, this was midday, there was a dark darkness. There was a solar eclipse for three hours. It was dark. I mean, all this signifying who Jesus was hanging on the cross, it was all, it was all prophesied. And so many of, of God's people totally... Didn't, they didn't know it. The religious people rejected it. There was even a centurion, a, a Roman soldier that would say, surely, surely there was the son of, son of God. Even, even his heart would be moved by God towards, towards Jesus Christ. It was about, about this hour. There was a dark, was a dark over all the earth until the, the ninth hour. The sun was darkened. The veil of the temple was, was rent. In the, and when, when Jesus had cried with a loud, loud voice, he said, Father, in thy hands commend I my, my spirit. And having, having said that, he gave up the ghost. Even in the end, Jesus departed the body, gave up the ghost. But what is life? He willingly laid it down so that I could have life. And true, the cross reminds us our, our sins are forgiven. We have life because of Jesus Christ. Next week's week, when we look at the empty tomb, we're going to be reminded that our lives are changed because of the empty tomb, because we have a risen Savior, a risen Savior who, who lives within us. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live and live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. I mean, that's Galatians 2.20. I mean, I have life, life because of Jesus Christ. In Matthew 27, verse 45, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over, over all land unto the, the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried cry with a loud voice, saying, Eli, 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 that is to say, my, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus not only suffered a cruel execution or a, a cruel beating, a, a cruel crucifixion, but he suffered something far beyond the crucifixion. And that was the Heavenly Father turning his back on his only begotten Son. Because as of all sin was poured out on Jesus Christ, God the Father had to turn his back and Jesus, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He had never experienced the absence of God the Father. Now the Trinity is something that's no can really understand. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, how those three are one. And they have their offices. The only way you can really describe it is 
you know, God's a creator, Jesus, Savior, the Holy Spirit is the is one that ministers in the lives of God's people, seals us. He's, he's the, I guess, the sealer. God the creator, Jesus the Savior, Holy Spirit's the sealer because he seals us at the, the moment of salvation. You can't lose your salvation. But Jesus experiencing, he doesn't want anyone else to experience, and that's the separation from God. From God. Because anyone who rejects Jesus Christ and dies, not having put their faith, their faith, and faith in Jesus Christ, receiving the gift of eternal life, they separated from a loving God and, and thrown into hell, darkness, pain, everything that opposite sit God. That's what, what Jesus does not, did not want any, anyone have to endure. Because what's the, what, what's the opposite of sunshine? Darkness. What's, what's the opposite of joy? In everything that God is, there's an opposite to it. It's not what God wants us to have. He wants, wants us to have His goodness. And He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us so that we could, could have, have our sins and be forgiven. And, and obviously the grave is empty to prove that He is God and that we have life, life in Him. But this pay, payment gives access to God. The Bible reminds us, for Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures, figures of true, but into he heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for, for us. For centuries, the priests had to go had to go to the Holy of Holies to spread the blood of lambs on the mercy, mercy seat. But Jesus Christ did not go into, go into the handmade Holy of Holies. He went straight into the heavens. He went, he went straight throne of God. With his blood, blood, right before the holy of holies, he went went to God with his blood, and God accepted, received it for the atonement of all all sin, for the remission of our sin. The Bible says in Hebrews, Hebrews ten, having therefore the brethren bold to enter into the to the holy by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Remember, remember, we read earlier that when Jesus dies, he cries out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? When he gives up the, the ghost, there's an earth, earthquake. The veil on the temple is, is torn in two from top to bottom because Jesus made a way for us to, us to go directly to the Lord. He made a way for any sin, sinner to be saved, to be cleansed, and, and able to have a relationship with God, the Creator. But, but this, this moment is freely given. Therefore doth my, my Father love me, because, because I lay down my life, Jesus says, that I might take it again. again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down, down of myself. I have power to lay it down, I have power to take it up again. again this commandment have I received of my Father. You realize that Jesus could have just not gone to the cross of Calvary. He had power to lay it down. He could do whatever he, whatever he wanted. But obviously, having love for, for people, love for sinners, he was willing to lay down his life. No man took it from him. He willingly laid, laid on the cross of Calvary. And when the time was right, he, give, he gives up the, that body is dead. And because he is God, they, they bury that body in that borrowed tomb from Joseph of Arimathea. And three days later, the tempting. Jesus laid, laid down his life, and he took it up again, because he is God. God. He did what no one can do. do. Die and rise Isaac again. He gave life to Lazarus. He, tell, he tells Mary, I am the resurrection, because he's the giver of life. Though so every single person that comes to him receives life. And, and if you've received life through Jesus Christ because there's been a time in your life to put your faith and trust in him, just remind yourself of what he's done for you. And that will help us to remain, to remain faithful to him, to keep following him, to keep trusting him, to keep building our life upon his word, word and upon that firm foundation that cannot be destroyed, and that, that is Jesus Christ because there's Another name given among, given among whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ. He's the, he's the giver of life. 
And I hope this morning, just the sun shine, shine, the sun is shining, that the sun is shining in your hearts, that you, that you have that power that comes through Jesus Christ, Christ, and Him as your Savior. And we have something to look forward to, celebrating the empty tomb. And beyond that, walking, walking on the golden streets of the new Jerusalem, being with, with the Lord throughout all, all eternity, with our, our glorified bodies, no more sickness, no more death, our faith becoming sight, seeing the one we've been following by faith, seeing the one we've been trusting by faith, seeing the, the one we've been waiting to see. Wait till the trumpet sounds and, the, and the, all of God's people are caught up in the, in the clouds with him to see the, the one who, who said, I love this much, with hands stretched out. 